So in today's video, we're going to talk about the T wave. The T wave in the ECG represents ventricular repolarization. It tends to be a lot slower than the QRS complex, which represents depolarization. So it tends to be broader than this complex and is upright in most leads. Since the T wave represents repolarization, physiologically speaking, repolarization begins at the surface epicardium of the heart and spreads inwards towards the endocardium. Therefore, in terms of the direction compared to depolarization, we know that repolarization is in the opposite direction. The T wave tends to be upright in most leads, except V1 and AVR. In terms of its size, when you look at it in leads V1 to V6, it should be less than 15 millimeters in amplitude. Often on an ECG, you may see inverted T waves, and it's important to note that these can be a normal finding in certain patients. Inverted T waves, however, may represent other more persistent conditions. So, for example, you see inverted T waves in a patient having a heart attack or myocardial ischemia. You can also see them in patients with an enlarged heart known as ventricular hypertrophy. They're also seen in bundle branch blocks and can be seen in a pulmonary embolism where the patient typically presents with shortness of breath, maybe coughing up blood, and risk factors for a pulmonary embolism such as cancer, recent travel, a clotting disorder, or immobility. Finally, you may see inverted T waves in patients who have a head injury and raised intracranial pressure as a result of this, or in hypertrophic cardiomyopathy. Another common ECG abnormality of T waves is peaked T waves. Peaked T waves are these tall, narrow T waves that are seen in patients who have a high potassium in their blood. So one of the key ECG features of hyperkalemia is a peaked T wave. Just a note on hyperkalemia. In this patient, what you'll need to do is to confirm the potassium level and in the interim, give them calcium gluconate IV and often you'll also give them insulin and glucose to bring down the potassium level. Insulin leads to the influx of potassium into the cell. 